story twenty one of thirty ghost stories by various authors this librivox recording is in the public domain the open door by s mukherjee here again is something that is very peculiar and not very uncommon we myself and three friends of mine were asked by another friend of ours to pass a week's holiday at the suburban residence of the last named we took an evening train after the office hours and reached our destination at about ten thirty that night the place was about sixty miles from calcutta our host had a very large house with a number of disused wings i do not think many of my readers have any idea of a large residential house in bengal generally it is a quadrangular sort of thing with a big yard in the centre which is called the angan or uthan a courtyard on all sides of the courtyard are rooms of all sorts of shapes and sizes there are generally two stories the lower used as kitchen go-down storeroom etc and the upper as bedrooms etc now this particular house of our friend was of the kind described above it stood on extensive grounds wooded with fruit and timber trees there was also a big tank a miniature lake in fact which was the property of my friend there was good fishing in the lake and that was the particular attraction that had drawn my other friends to this place i myself was not very fond of angling as i have said we reached this place about ten thirty at night we were received very kindly by the father and the mother of our host who were a very jolly old couple and after a very late supper or shall i call it dinner we retired the guest rooms were well furnished and very comfortable it was a bright moonlight night and our plan was to get up at four in the morning and go to the lake for angling at three in the morning the servants of our host woke us up they had come to carry our fishing gear and we went to the lake which was a couple of hundred yards from the house as i have said it was a bright moonlight night in summer and the outing was not unpleasant after all we remained on the bank of the lake till about seven in the morning when one of the servants came to fetch us for our morning tea i may as well mention here that breakfast in india generally means a pretty heavy meal at about ten a m i was the first to get up for i have said already that i was not a worthy disciple of isaac walton i wound up my line and walked away carrying my rod myself the lake was towards the back of the house to come from the lake to the front of it we had to pass along the whole length of the buildings see rough plan above as would appear from the plan we had to pass along the shady footpath a b c d e there was a turning at each point b c d and e the back row of rooms was used for go-downs storerooms kitchens etc one room the one with the door marked star at the corner was used for storing a number of door frames the owner of the house our host's father had at one time contemplated adding a new wing and for that purpose the door frames had been made then he gave up the idea and the door frames were kept stored up in that corner room with a door on the outside marked star now as i was walking ahead i reached the turning b first of all and it was probably an accident that the point of my rod touched the door the door flew open i knew this was an unused portion of the house and so the opening of the door surprised me to a certain extent i looked into the room and discovered the wooden door frames there was nothing peculiar about the room or its contents either when we were drinking our tea five minutes later i casually remarked that they would find some of the door frames missing as the door of the room in which they were kept had been left open all night i did not at that time attach any importance to a particular look in the eyes of the old couple my host's father and mother the old gentleman called one of the servants and ordered him to bolt that door when we were going to the lake in the evening i examined the door and found it had been closed from the inside the next morning we went out a fishing again and we were returning for our tea at about seven in the morning i was again ahead of all the rest 
as i came along this time intentionally i gave a push to the door with my rod it again flew open this is funny i thought at tea i reported the matter to the old couple and then i noticed with curiosity their embarrassed look of the day before i therefore suggested that the servants intentionally left the door open and one morning they would find the door frames stored in the room gone at this the old man smiled he said that the door of this particular room had remained open for the last fifteen years and the contents had never been disturbed on our pressing him why the door remained open he admitted with great reluctance that since the death of a certain servant of the household in that particular room fifteen years ago the outer door had never remained closed you may close it yourself and see suggested the old gentleman we required no further invitation immediately we all went to that room to investigate and find out the ghost if he remained indoors during the day but mr ghost was not there he has gone out for his morning constitutional i suggested and this time we shall keep him out now this particular room had two doors and one window the window and one door were on the courtyard side of the room and communicated with the courtyard the other door led to the grounds outside and this last was the haunted door we opened both the doors and the window and examined the room there was nothing extraordinary about it then we tried to close the haunted door it had warped probably by being kept open for fifteen years it had two very strong bolts on the inside but the lower bolt would not go within three inches of its socket the upper one was very loose and a little continuous thumping would bring the bolt down we thought we had solved the mystery thus the servants only closed the door by pushing up the upper bolt at night the wind would shake the door and the bolt would come down so this time we took good care to use the lower bolt three of us pushed the door with all our mind and one man thrust the lower bolt into a socket it hardly went in a quarter of an inch but still the door was secure we then hammered the bolt in with bricks in doing this we broke about a half a dozen of them this will explain to the reader how much strength it required to drive the bolt in about an inch and a half then we satisfied ourselves that the bolt could not be moved without the aid of a hammer and a lever afterwards we closed the window and the other door and securely locked the last thus no human being could open the haunted door before retiring to bed after dinner we further examined both doors once more they were all right the next morning we did not go out for fishing so when we got up at about five in the morning the first thing we did was go and examine the haunted door it flew in at the touch we then went inside and examined the other door and the window which communicated with the courtyard the window was as secure as we had left it and the door was chained from the outside we went round into the courtyard and examined the lock it did not appear to have been tampered with the old man and his wife met us at tea as usual they had evidently been told everything they however did not mention the subject neither did we it was my intention to pass a night in that bedroom but nobody would agree to bear me company and i did not quite like the idea of passing a whole night in that ugly room moreover my host would not have heard of it the mystery of the open door has not yet been solved it was about twenty years ago that what i have narrated above happened i am not sure that the mystery will ever be solved in this connection it will not be out of place to mention another incident with regard to another family and another house in another part of bengal once while coming back from darjeeling the summer capital of bengal i had a very garrulous old gentleman for a fellow traveller in the same compartment i was reading a copy of the occult review and the title of the magazine interested him very much he asked me what the magazine was about and i told him he then asked me if i was really interested in ghosts and their stories i told him that i was 
in our village we have a gentleman who has a family ghost said my companion what kind of thing is a family ghost i asked oh the ghost comes and has his dinner with my neighbor every night said my companion really it must be a very funny ghost i said that is a fact if you stay for a day in my village you will learn everything i at once decided to break my journey in the village it was about two in the afternoon when i got down at the railway station procured a hackney carriage and ascertaining the name and address of the gentleman who had the family ghost separated from my old companion i reached the house in about twenty minutes and told the gentleman that i was a stranger in those parts and as such craved leave to pass the rest of the day and the night under his roof i was a very unwelcome guest but he could not kick me out as the moral code would not permit it he however shrewdly guessed why i was anxious to pass the night at his house of course my host was very kind to me he was a tolerably rich man with a large family most of his sons were grown up young men who were at college in calcutta the younger children were of course at home at night when we sat down to dinner i gently broached the subject by hinting at the rumor i had heard that his house was haunted i further explained to him that i had only come to ascertain if what i had heard was true he told me of course it was very kind of him that the story about the dinner was false and what really happened was this i had a younger brother who died two years ago he was of a religious turn of mind and passed his time in reading religious books and writing articles about religion in papers he died suddenly one night in fact he was found dead in his bed in the morning the doctor said it was due to failure of heart since his death he has come and slept in the room which was his when he was alive and is his still all that he takes is a glass of water fetched from the sacred river ganges we put the glass of water in the room and make the bed every evening the next morning the glass is found empty and the bed appears to have been slept upon but why did you begin i asked oh one night he appeared to me in a dream and asked me to keep the water and a clean bed in the room this was about a month after his death said my host has anybody ever passed a night in the room to see what really happens i asked his young wife or rather widow passed a night in that room the next morning we found her on the bed sleeping dead from heart failure so the doctors said most wonderful and interesting i remarked nobody has gone to that part of the house since the death of the poor young widow said my host i have got all the doors of the room securely screwed up except one and that too is kept carefully locked and the key is always with me after dinner my host took me to the haunted room all arrangements for the night were being made and the bed was neat and clean a glass of the ganges water was kept in a corner with a cover on it i looked at the doors they were all perfectly secure the only door that could open was then closed and locked my host smiled at me sadly we won't do all this uselessly he said this is a very costly trick if you think it's a trick at all because i have to pay to the servants double the amount that others pay in this village otherwise they would run away you can sleep at the door and see that nobody gets in at night i said i believe you most implicitly and need not take the precaution suggested i was then shown into my room and everybody withdrew my room was four or five apartments off and of course these apartments were to be unoccupied as soon as my host and the servants had withdrawn i took up my candle and went out to the locked door of the ghostly room with lighted candle i covered the back of the lock with a thin coating of soot or lamp black then i scraped off a little dried up whitewash from the wall and sprinkled the powder over the lamp black if anybody disturbs the lock at night i shall know it in the morning i thought well the reader could guess that i had not a good sleep that night i got up at about four thirty in the morning and went to the locked door my seal was intact 
That is, the lamp black with the powdered lime was there just as I had left it. I took out my handkerchief and wiped the lock clean. The whole operation took about five minutes. Then I waited. At about five my host came and a servant with him. The locked door was opened in my presence. The glass of water was dry, and there was not a drop of water in it. The bed had been slept upon. There was a distinct mark on the pillow where the head should have been, and the sheet, too, looked as if somebody had been in the bed the whole night. I left the same day by the afternoon train, having passed about twenty-three hours with the family in the haunted house. End of Story 21